Hello, my name is Joe Beer and I'm with Beer and & Associates and today we're going to talk about our ST800. The part number ST800 stands for Service Tester 800 Amps. This unique tool to the utility industry does two things simultaneously. First, it will test the integrity of secondary conductors and it will also identify secondary conductors and there are a couple applications for identifying primary conductors. Let's begin by noticing how small, lightweight, and compact the ST800 is. It's also equipped with a magnetic back that will attach to ferrous material. If the service you're working on is not ferrous, the unit can be easily handheld while in operation. Depending on the data manufacturer, there are either two switches or two push buttons located on the front of the device. The one on the right is your on-off switch or push button, and the one on the left is your V or I for voltage or current. There is also a green test light, and this light comes on whenever the unit is in operation or attached to a live circuit. The green light will blink as the unit pulses. The ST800 is available with two different size clamps for connection. The small connectors as seen here work better for small meter bases or areas with limited space. We also have available, upon request, a larger, more durable, insulated clamp. So let's begin our first demonstration by connecting the clamps to this meter base and turning the device on. Once all of our connections have now been made, you will notice that the black conductor is connected to the neutral and the red conductor is connected to one of our hots in the meter base. We should now turn the device on in the V position. The V position will verify and make sure that neither the neutral nor one of the hots that we have it connected to is open, as demonstrated here by reading 120 volts. Also notice here that the SD800 count is already at 4. In the V or voltage position, the SD800 will alternate between a voltage reading and a count reading. If we flip the V and I button or V and I switch to the current or I position, it will alternate between the same count reading and a current reading. The maximum count is 158 counts, and I will explain later in the video how the count number can become important troubleshooting information. As I zoom the camera in here, let's focus our attention on something very important. As the ST800 gradually increases in count, we want to focus our attention on how much current it increases per count. This information is very important for a couple different reasons. One, if the ST800 current increases approximately 8 amps or greater per count, then we know the conductors that the leads are attached to are able to source a high amount of current, and more than likely, the ST800 will achieve 800 amps fairly easy. This is obviously a good service that we're attached to in this demonstration, and at approximately 50 counts, we're already up close to 700 amps. Now let's let the SD800 continue up to 800 amps and talk about how high the count number is and what that means. We'll notice it stopped at 52 counts at 800 amps. So the first thing we noticed on this service was that the SD800 was able to achieve a much greater than an 8 amp per count increase. The other thing we noticed is the count number itself stopping at 52. Since we were quickly able to determine that both the neutral and the hot on this service are good conductors, now using the count number 52, we're able to compare that with the other hot and the same neutral connection. But first cycle the ST800 power off. By simply moving the red lead over to the other hot, and then turning the ST800 on again and performing the exact same test, we should see an equivalent or close to 52 counts at 800 amps. This would verify that all three conductors are now good 
in this service is then good as well. It is important to remember that some services may not be able to achieve 800 amps. There are a couple reasons the cause is. The conductor size may be too small, such as number 4 wire, or the service may have a long distance causing high voltage drop, or it could be a combination of both small cable and a long service distance. Whichever the case may be, you're looking for consistency between all three connections. As an example, if our first test between the neutral conductor and one of the hot conductors was only able to achieve 600 amps, then we would expect to see 600 amps between the same neutral connection and the other hot conductor as well. If the neutral is the same size conductor as both hot conductors, the connections between both hots would also expect to see 600 amps. If the hot conductors are larger than the neutral, then you should expect to see a higher current reading between both hot conductors. In the same meter base, I've moved the black lead over to the other hot conductor to better demonstrate how the STRCV can identify each conductor. With the ST800 pulsing 800 amps, we want to take our STRCV and put it in the high position. This is for 300 amps and greater. The medium switch position will be used for anything between 350 amps, and the low switch position will be used for anything less than 50 amps. Notice when we put the STRCV on the red conductor, every time the ST800 pulses, the arrow points up, and every time the ST800 pulses, the arrow points down on the black conductor. This means that every time the ST800 pulses, it goes back towards the ST800 on the black lead and away from the ST800 on the red lead. We will now identify the two conductors we are attached to in the meter base at the transformer. With the ST800 still pulsing 800 amps and the STRCV still in a high switch position, we want to afford ourselves the most room possible. To get the most reliable, consistent reading, place the concave STRCV cone tip perpendicular to the conductor and also as far away as possible from the other conductors. Notice the lit LED and the corresponding arrow. The arrow is pointing up into the transformer and away from the ST800. If you recall from our earlier example, this is the same conductor that we were attached to with the red lead. So not only have we identified a conductor that the ST800 is attached to, but we have identified which lead the red conductor of the ST800 is attached to, which just so happens to be the hot conductor. We can verify our connection by testing the other hot conductors that there is no pulse on those as well, but only the conductor we're attached to with the ST800. We also want to be able to identify the neutral conductor, and we will perform this in the same manner as we did when we identified the hot conductor. Since the black lead of the ST800 is attached to the neutral, we're looking for a pulse in the opposite direction as the hot, so the pulse should be pointing down. Here is the hot conductor pointing up, and once we find the neutral, it's pointing down in the opposite direction as the hot pointing up. So now we've been able to identify both conductors. If the situation ever occurred where you're unsure where the service is fed from, a preliminary check at the bushings can be made to verify the source of power for the service. Again, notice the direction of the arrow and the indicating LED. With the arrow pointing to the left, this indicates that the neutral is still connected to the black lead of the ST800 since the pulse is going back to the ST800. With the arrow pointing to the right, or into the transformer, this indicates that it's still connected to the red lead of the ST800 since the pulse is going away from the ST800.
This concludes our ST800 training. If you should have any questions or concerns about any of the demonstrations that you've seen in this video, you can give us a call at 803-786-4839 or email us at customer underscore service at beerermeters.com. Thank you and have a great day.